Yo, yo, yeah, boys got COVID, so that's super fun. I really like that a lot. Uh, so before my throat gets completely unspeakable, because it's starting to hurt, I'm trying to get this video out. So, after some likes and dislikes on the last 10 Commander Ideas video, I uh, doubled down and made another one, just a little smaller. Hopefully with some improvements, uh, and please be honest down in the comments down below what you guys think. Getting right into it. The first deck is called Frodo and Sam the Shire's Blessing. Our boy Frodo, Adventurous Hobbit, is a 1-3 with Vigilance that allows the ring to tempt us if we gain 3 or more life and draws us a card if the ring has tempted us 2 or more times this game. While his partner Sam, Loyal Attendant, is a 2-4 that creates us a food token at the beginning of our combat. He also makes those food tokens activation cost 1 less. This deck's normally just a food gain life deck, but ours is an ascended token deck. With Frodo getting the ring and drawing us cards, also allowing us to make some of our small tokens ring bearers, which works great. While Sam creates food tokens on our turn, guaranteed, which helps us get ascended like multiple turns ahead of schedule. Plus, the obs on colors gives us access to the best ascended cards with a total of 11 ascended cards, and all of them actually work really well with this specific strategy. Wayward Sawtooth gives us great ramp. Tendershoot Dryad and Illustrious Wanderglyph are great token creators, while Anduin and Radiant Destiny can give us board buffs for our tokens. It's super good. On top of this, running the normal token cards like Avenger of Zendikar to make way more bodies or Cathar's Crusade to keep buffing your board from all the tender shoot dryad triggers. This thing seems pretty fun. Deck number two is Nevenral Suspend. Nevenral Urborg Tyrant is a nasty commander. At six mana, this Esper commander creates a 2-2 zombie for each creature that died this turn when it enters. You can also pay one when it dies to destroy all creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. This deck is normally just full of feign death cards, control cards, sack outlets to get tons of zombies, keep reusing our commander, wipe everybody else's board. You know, it's still got some of those feign death cards because they're just really good in Nev. But this deck is about predicting the end. It's about the, you're like the crazed guy on the side of the street that's like, the end of days is coming. This is, this is what you're role playing with this deck. Using suspend cards like Eon Chronicler and Atraxi Warden to tell our opponents, hey, in so and so many turns, I'm gonna wipe you like a loaded diaper. And that's word to Roderick. The idea is to suspend these creature and spell threats and use Nevenral the turn before they come out to optimize their potency. For example, Curse of the Cabal either makes them keep sacking everything, or we get the Nevenral board wipe playoff and they start sacking lands. It's super gross. Inevitable Betrayal might be my favorite though. Wipe the board with Nev, cast this next turn, put their threat on our side. Take something as simple as Shade of Trocare. If it's the only thing on board because you just wiped with our Nev and pumpable, it can seriously deal some sick damage to the opponents. Keep in mind, you don't have to crack Nev the turn before all of this. You can just play it normal and crack it when the opponent's boards get too good. So you've still got the control option with this. And with the new Doctor Who set, it gave us a ton of new suspend toys to play with, so that's always good. Up next is Kulfenor Modular, and it's a Spicer Stoinch. Kulfenor is a commander I have built a couple times and I thoroughly enjoyed, but I replaced it with Teneb because Teneb's my boy. Kulfenor turns each creature we control that dies into a regrow for another creature in our graveyard that has less toughness. In this deck, we run all the modular creatures and 1-1 one, one counter interactions, of course, as modular creatures sit in the grave as 0-0s, zero, but they enter play bigger and give counters when they die, which will interact with the plus-1-plus-1 one, plus one counter themes and works insanely well with Kulfenor. Pair something like Arcbound Worker with Arcbound Stinger, and then like an Ashnod's Altar with Kulfenor, and boom, you've got infinite mana, which seems pretty good. Put some death triggers in there, and you've got infinite death triggers. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of different ways to win with the modular boys, so it seems pretty versatile. Throw in some artifact interaction like Marionette Master, and this is a totally new way to go about Kulfenor that seems really fun to play. Cedric Cycle. I know. I know. This one might get some comments. I get it. Cedric is a Grixis commander that gives all the creature cards in our graveyard unearthed for two and a black. Pair this with some of the huge, dorky, budget-friendly cards with cycling, like I don't know, Olifint or Rampaging War Mammoth. Or I'm sure there's a third elephant based cycling card that's really good in red. The deck kind of makes itself. I might catch some flack for this one because one, cycling cards are just good in Cedrus. Couldn't agree more. And two, Cedrus came out in the same set that a ton of cycling cards came out in. But in my defense, people do not go straight cycling on Cedrus. They run some of the cycling cards that are just good to run anyway, but they don't lean fully into it, which I think is very good. Because it gives us access to some really good cards like Surly Bajasaur, which gives us tons of value for discarding as well as Waste Not. Plus, New Perspectives allows us to draw three cards and make all of our cycling costs zero, which paired with Cedrus is just value city. Arcfiend of Ifnir, Ominous Seas. Tons of cool stuff can go in here. I actually really like this. And finally, I really like this one. Extus, one spell slot. Extus is a Mardu commander. 
That's front side is a 2-4 double strike with Magecraft. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. Its backside is a huge 8-drop Rakdos spell that can make you that allows you to sack a creature to reduce its cost. The spell makes each opponent sack a creature and makes us a 3-6 demon that drains people. We really care about the front side. And I've got to be honest, this idea isn't necessarily for strategic effect, but man, is it super cool. Okay, so my idea is to run our commander and 37 lands. And if I'm mathing correctly, that leaves us 62 open slots. Those 62 slots are going to be 31 creatures and 31 instants and sorceries. No artifacts, no enchantments. And each of those 31 instants and sorceries are going to pair with one of your creatures in your deck perfectly. Acting as that creature's spell slot. For example, we're going to run Young Pyromancer. His one spell slot would be Path of Pyromancy. We run Grave Titan. His spell slot would be Moan of the Unhallowed. Our Rakdos Lord of Riots... You know he keeps that charm on him, baby. I love this idea. Each creature has its one spell slot, and you got kind of get to ask yourself, you get to run all your favorite creatures and ask yourself what would that creature cast, which is actually really cool. But I don't know, like I said at the beginning of this video, let me know if you like or dislike any of these ideas, and please comment some of your cool ideas down below. Uh, and if you'd like to submit one of your decks over on the subreddit at r slash Lotus, you can always go do that. But either way, much love, guys, and uh, make sure you played some magic today, you know?